Flappy Bird is a cool game. Not really. And there are a lot of idiots trying to copy it. And I so happen to be an idiot. So the only logical thing to do is, well, um, you know, make Flappy Bird and stick some AI too. So I'm gonna be using Python, well, because, um, you know, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, Python, it, it, it's just cool and stuff. So here's a list of things we need to do to make this dumb game. So first, I need to make Flappy Bird with Python using Pygame, because Pygame is, um, you know, cool and stuff. Then I need to draw some sprites, because... Without sprites, the game would probably look like garbage, and I don't want garbage, you know? And finally, add the juicy AI to the game. So, I installed some modules and stuff. The first thing I needed were placeholder images. So, with my questionable drawing skills, I whipped up some squares and circles. Now, if you don't know how Flappy Bird works, you're kind of weird, but anyways. So basically, you're a bird which flies through pipes and stuff, and if you hit the pipe or the ground, you die. And that's basically the game. And it made a million dollars. That's... That, that sucks. Okay. Anyways, back to this. So I imported all the modules I needed and set out to work. First thing I did was set up the game loop using Pygame's event system. And it looks like this. First, I'm going going through the events in Pygame with the for loop, and then I'm checking if we click the X button to close the window. And wow, we have a window. Then I drew the player on the screen with Pygame's blit function and updated the screen to make it visible to find out that it had a ba white background in it. So to override the background, I used the set underscore color key function to remove the color. Big brain, big brain. I have a big brain, pretty big one actually. Then I started working on the bird class, and I'm using class and objects for a good reason because object oriented programming is easy to under understand and is much more neater than other methods. So I made the animations for the player and used some math to make him move and tilt at the same time to look like a flap. As well as added a jump function to add some upward momentum to his movement. Then I added some physics to the game and now the player can fall. Next thing I needed were some pipes. So I coded the pipe class to be randomly generated for more fun. And I made the ground infinitely generated by instancing a new one every time it leaves the screen. It was time to make AI for this stupid game. I used Neat because it was the most interesting to work with and I really enjoyed working with it. And I am hoping that I can work with it in the future, which probably will happen anyways. The way Neat works is that it takes inputs and outputs and uses them for certain values. For example, our bird's y-axis movement and the top and bottom pipe would be reasonable inputs and the output would be whether to jump or not. And Neat also needs a population size, which is basically how many birds to be generated per generation. I don't want to go too deep into explaining Neat, but this is just the gist. The first thing I needed was a configuration file for this Neat project. Get it? Neat project? The config file also allows Neat to work out what is required. Then I coded the neural network with the neat algorithm and it started to work. Then I generated 100 birds for testing but it wasn't really good because a lot of them died and it was just a mess. So then I realized that the less we have, the better output we get. So I divided 100 by 2 and I tried 50 and it was actually pretty well but not what I was looking for. So then I tried 20 and it was amazing how awesome that it can actually go through each hole. It was so cool that it actually found its way through the holes and that was really awesome. Now that's it for this video and the code for this project is in the GitHub repository in the description below.
subscribe for some more videos, and I'll see you in the next video. I want to thank my Patreon, NingNangNongi, for his awesome support on Patreon. If interested, please visit my Patreon page, which is in the description below.